everyone, it's Nikki from the design team and today I'm here with this precious lawn fawn card. So we're going to look at coloring a rainbow with lawn fawn and all the Copic colors that I use. We're going to use a background stencil and create very fluffy clouds with some paste. And then we're going to use some of these brand new products. This is called Wheelie Great Day and it's the cutest little set with a Ferris wheel. And it looks so good um, on your fun little birthday cards, whatever you want to make, it's going to look great as a rainbow. To me, a great lawn fawn card has a lot of images. I just love their cute little images. So this is a new one called Coaster Critters Flip Flop, and I'm gonna show you the older set because we're gonna use this as well. This is the original Coaster Critters, and you see how they're flip flops so that they can be running towards each other? So we're gonna use both of those sets, and we're gonna use one other older set called Happy Village. I'm just gonna use trees from this. And we're gonna create a slim line. So I've got out just a regular um, A10 envelope. It's like a billing envelope. And I cut mine to where they fit a little bit um, more loosely in there. So I'm gonna do a three and a half by an eight. And I'll pop that on the screen. To get started, we needed to hold that little wheel up to see where we're going to have the pavement meet the sky. And so I'm using some tape here and that way I can ink blend above this. So I'm just using some removable tape, my T-ruler, and trying to get this as straight as possible. So I'm gonna start on the sky and I'm gonna use tumbled glass kind of in the middle of the sky. And then I'm gonna come around the edges with salty ocean, which is just a little bit darker. And these are both distress oxides, so they blend really well. I did cut this paper out of Bristol Smooth, which is a very good blending paper. And we are going to create the cutest cloud background. Now it's gonna have super cute images and I don't know if people are gonna notice how amazing this background is, but it's gonna be so cute. So we're gonna use some of the new cloudy stencils on it and we're going to use a paste to create fluffy clouds. Before I add those clouds, I'm going to add some fun white droplets on here and we're going to let it dry. Okay, so we are going to use a regular stencil on a slimline card. So I'm covering up these little half clouds at the edge and I'm going to tape this down and we're going to add all to new embossing paste, which is a really nice matte white fluffy paste. I'm going to have to do this in several layers. One, because I want multiple layers of clouds. Um, it's a layering stencil from Lawn Fawn called Cloudy Background. This is one of the new stencils. But also because I need to let this paste dry a little bit in between my applications. So it doesn't have to dry too long. I, I allowed it at least an hour in between. And you can always feel it if you put it on a little thicker than that. You may want to give it a couple of hours. But with Lawn Fawn cards, to me, it's a little easy to do these kinds of layered things because you've got so many images to color so you can start your background and then let that get going. So I skipped ahead to where I've got the whole background done. Now I'm showing you, you can line up these little clouds and figure out exactly where this is supposed to go, but just do it however you want to. This is gonna be my second layer and I'm gonna speed through it and just show you the end process so that we can get to the coloring. And don't worry about small mistakes. You've already got white dots on there. If you went a little outside your stencil, I just cleaned up edges, but you're gonna have so many images in front of this. It is gonna be the background. Do not worry. Do not scratch your project if you think you messed your stenciling up. Creating a base color with Lost Shadow, which if you haven't seen that color, it's very fun. And then I'm gonna use the brick stencil. And once again, this is not a slimline stencil, so I'm gonna move it along the edge and I'm gonna add Hickory Smoke. The hickory smoke will be the brick color, but in between the bricks will be lost shadow, and it looks really nice together. So this is not perfect. I do overlap a little bit. You can be real, um, you know, like tape off those extra bricks, but I do overlap in a little bit in the middle, and I'm not worried about it. Once again, there's going to be so many images. This background is not going to be super obvious that there's any mistakes. Okay, here are the Copic colors that I used for the rainbow parts of this card. And once again, these will be listed in the description, so don't worry. If you've gotten to this point in the video, make sure you've hit the like and subscribe button to the Scrapbook Pal channel. I'd really appreciate that. With this, I went on and stamped out a lot of images. I may end up needing more images than this. I know I will, but I like to get started and try to do, especially if I'm doing rainbows, do the rainbow on multiple in images at the same time to save yourself a little bit of time. And I'm only using two colors per, so like two pinks, two oranges, two greens, just to give it just a little bit of that um, highlight look. 
it, on these small images, you don't necessarily have to do this. This is just one of those things I like to do. I think it just makes it look extra special. And you can see I forgot to do that down here on my little umbrella that goes over the ticket booth. So I'm going to go back and create that pink. Sometimes when you're getting started, you got to decide how many places you're going to put your rainbows. And the reason I'm not coloring in the cars of the Ferris wheel on the main stamp is because the way this stamp set works, the reason they give you those baskets is because you can stick the little critter behind it. You can glue it to the um, back of the basket and then the, put the basket on top of this other stamped image. So you don't need to waste your time coloring those bits of the Ferris wheel if you're not going, if you're going to put little animals in them. It just really looks more 3D and really cute when you do the animals on um, the baskets. And it probably makes it a little easier to color, really. Now I use all these same colors to create the rainbow sentiment. So I cut out the word happy and I created the letters. Happy is nice because it's exactly five colors, which is what I'm using here. So it's very easy to create yourself a rainbow. So I'll briefly show that. I'm going to continue coloring all of my rainbow here um, so that you can see the colors. And then I'll show you briefly the happy that I did at the same time. And when I say at the same time, I forgot to do it at the same time. I did it later with the exact same colors. How about that? So for my blues, I used B02 for the base. And then for the highlights to make the darker areas, B04. And then the purples, we did V01 and V04. I'm going to show you a cool effect on the wood and the colors used for the roller coaster. And then we'll put this card together. Really quick, all the metal on this Ferris wheel and on the roller coaster are colored with N1 and highlighted with N3. Okay, last thing is creating the wood. So I started with E11 and now I'm going to E13 and I'm just going to take in from the sides and start making it kind of streaky. I just feel like that looks more like wood. And so I'm going to add the E13 and then I'm going to go in with one darker color and make more stripes. And from far away, this just really looks like you've got a wood plank there. So I'll show you on this one too. I'm kind of creating some shadows on the top, not worrying about that swiping in until I get down to the body of this. And I'm swiping in with my mid color right here, which is E13. And then let's go to the darker color and make some of those swipes. So we're going to use E23. I'm going to add just a little darkness just so that this has got a shadow in the middle right here. And then I'm going to swipe gently from the sides and try to make it as wispy as I can, which sometimes is hard. And I don't want to come all the way to the middle because it leaves you that nice highlight right there. So you're just trying to create some darkness on the edges so that the middle of your booth is kind of lit up, but it still looks like that nice um, wood grain. So I'm going to do it again on this one so you can see how I did it because I love this effect. I don't know why. It's just one of those things that I really, really love. I think it just gives it such a cool look. So I did a little bit better on the food one than I did the tickets one, but guess what? No one will care because they're going to be so excited about this adorable card. It's going to be overwhelmingly cute. Just trust me. So see how I'm cutting the white part that was die cut here? So I'm getting it right to the black line. I like doing this because I can see more of my little um, image. If you can see up above on at 12 o'clock, I did that with the cat and I didn't cut the white off. And you can see it kind of just blocks the image a little bit. So I decided I would cut that off and I feel like my little bear looks so much better. And then you can put his little basket on. So I just added some liquid glue or any type of adhesive to the back of these and then kind of picked up my image and I'm adjusting them so they fit perfectly on this little Ferris wheel. And so my little bears and cats are straight up and down so they fit right in here. I'm actually going to pull this one off and um, trim that little area because like I said it's covering up a little bit of the picture. So just know that if you're ever not satisfied a lot of this stuff I can pull apart and not cause too much trouble because we're just covering that part back up. So I'm going to trim this off again so that I can see my cat just a little bit better and I'll show you the difference here. I think it makes a big difference. You see him now? Now I can see his paws. So just really cute way and I just added a little bit of liquid glue to the back of these and I'm going to put it back on. And then now the last thing I want to show you is I want to show you how I made the cotton candy. If you notice in my picture, I'll pop it up really quick, I have this great fun multicolored 
cotton candy, which is just one of my kids' favorite things. So I wanted to make sure I included that on this card. Took those same rainbow colors and I'm only using the lightest color. So we'll use um, RV13, this is YR00. And I'm just making dots to fill in this fluffy area and just kind of making each one slightly different. And then I'm gonna fill it in completely with that rainbow and it looks so cute. All right, so let me show you how I would start this card. I always start at the middle. So I am going to go ahead and put my words for happy on and make sure that they're, they're even and that they're in the middle. And then I'm going to build around that. And you'll see here I have black um, little things that say have a wheelie and a birthday and they're black with white heat embossing which I think would look fine but I just felt like in the end that I wanted those to be white because I had such um, lighter colors on this card so if you see those black notice that I don't end up putting those on I actually use the white ones with black writing and I think that looks a little bit better. Next is to build out from there with your other large pieces. So no, I haven't colored my roller coaster yet, but I wanna make sure I've got both of these pieces fitting on the side, and then I wanna see how many little characters I can fit on the bottom so that I know where I'm going, if I need to color a few more or what. Here's my little cute ticket booth, my cute food booth. Oh my goodness, those fit really well right there in the middle. And I'm gonna put some cotton candy and some other little characters. So we'll just slowly build this out and then get it all stuck down. So once I start getting it built out, then I can kind of look at my spacing, decide how I want things, and I can color any little um, things that I need to. I usually do a mixture of double-sided adhesive tape and glue when I'm sticking things down. So those clouds in the background are textured and they do stick up a little bit. So I want to, um, and the glue, it sticks to them, but not as good as the double-sided adhesive. So I'm gonna use double-sided adhesive on my little ticket booths because they're touching those little clouds. So everything that touches clouds, I'm gonna use double-sided adhesive except for that happy. The words happy, I didn't think about that, plus they're little small letters, so they're a little harder to do that double-sided adhesive. So everything else that's touching the sky, I did a double-sided adhesive because it just sticks better to that texture paste than the glue did. And you don't have to do this, but I do like to set my cards up with some type of symmetry. So see how I've got two food, the food booth and the ticket booth. And then I'm kind of putting my trees book ending the sides. And then I'm going to make sure that I have just, it just needs to look good to the eye. And I feel like if you put one tree somewhere, it's not really going to balance it out. If you put three, it looks a little bit better. And so I like bookending both sides. It kind of feels to me like it's the end of the card and the beginning of the card. I, does that make sense to anybody? I don't know. But um, I'm going to get these glued down. So once I glue all these little individual pieces down, I decide I hadn't glued the black yet, the black have a wheelie birthday yet. So I took those off and changed those out for white on black. And then I trimmed the edge off the roller coaster. And then here's the card. Now this card, you could back it with another color if you wanted. I just really liked it like this. And um, I decided to add my little white highlights. I love white highlights because I think they make your images show up better. But they also can cover any coloring mistakes. See how my little bear's not blended super great? But if I add some white highlights to them, it really just kind of fades all of that in. So it's a nice thing for anybody who is a new colorer to add. And this is a jelly roll number 10 that I'm using. And I'm gonna put it in the cotton candy. It just gives, I don't know, You maybe I can over do the white dots but I really like them a lot so I'm gonna add them to this card and then I'll show you the final card and we will be all done oh my goodness I'm overloaded with cuteness it's so cute so I hope that everyone enjoyed this video and if you have questions of course put the questions in the comments I will have a fun reel of this on Instagram as well make sure if you haven't done it yet that you hit the like and subscribe on the scrapbook pal channel and I hope to see you here again soon thanks so much bye